it's possible to speak about God and it's possible to speak about the soul. Two different things. A philosopher can understand this. What a philosopher cannot understand is that um, what a philosopher cannot understand is that the two are linked to each other. That the individual soul, the loving, feeling heart of the individual is part and parcel of the loving, feeling heart of God. So there's a philosopher can go far, but cannot go far enough unless she understands that there is love that links the two, that links the soul of that links the soul of of the individual and the soul of God. And Prabhupada continues here. Arjuna, after hearing the essential four verses of Bhagavad Gita in this chapter, <laughs> so the ones that came before, became completely free from all doubts and accepted Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So all the doubts were replaced by devotion and surrender to, to Krishna. Um, Prabhupada says, he at once boldly declares, you are Param Brahma, you are the great Brahma, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And previously Krishna states, that he is the originator of everything and everyone. Every demigod and every human being is dependent on him. And this brings us back to this, this question of dependence and independence. Um, everything is attached Everything that's important for us in our hearts is attached to the heart of Krishna. So in that sense, we are all dependent. The most important attachment to God is through love. And that attachment is also the loving energy of Radharani, who's flowing and keeping the love alive. Once again, We've said it before, but it's worth repeating that in the in the West we talk about independence as being no attachment to anything, freedom to be individual, completely uh, completely singular, completely alone, completely one. Whereas in bhakti, in Vaishnavism, in Hinduism, we, independence means the ability to be one in in love with with God. So I'm my heart is liberated when I'm connected with God. I'm free when I'm connected with God in my heart. So a completely different idea about independence. And Prabhupada goes on, men and demigods, <laughs> men and demigods, out of ignorance, they think that they are absolute and independent of Supreme Lord Krishna. So this idea of independence is another form of ignorance. And you know, we like to talk lots about fools and ignorance and what it means to not know. Again, in, in the West, we think about free thoughts and free action. And in bhakti, we understand that independence means surrendering to love, to giving ourselves into who we are, 
to admitting that we're made of love and that and then going to that place going becoming our loving selves that's freedom for us if you think about this huge arrogance of the west that i'm completely autonomous i can do everything myself i need no relation i need no, nobody else to help me i'm independent i'm free this makes love and loving relation impossible. So freedom for bhakti is freedom to be a loving, to be who I am as a lover, to be the loving being, to follow loving instinct. This instinct that we all possess, even the philosophers, come on, Let's admit, even the philosophers are lovers. They want to love. They want love. We all possess this. Some of us more, some of us less. Some of us are more understanding of it than others. But we all possess it. We all want love and want to love. So independence in bhakti means independence of the heart. It means freedom to embrace the other, the freedom to love entirely. Freedom to make love the law, the law of love, and not, not the abstract legal ideas the law not morality the law but love is the law and that means who is the governor who is the judge it's radharani being independent means putting radharani in the pilot seat letting her show us the way to be free in our in our feelings in our in our love So fools, they don't understand that freedom means freedom to love. And under, understanding this comes not through the, the mind, but through, through the heart. And if we're not in this place, if we're not good at that, then well, look now in the next line, Prabhupada explains how we can become better, how we can change our situation. He says that ignorance is removed perfectly by the discharge of devotional service. It's so simple. Let's put it in Gurudev's words. That ignorance is removed through love in action. By making all action loving. That is the discharge of devotional service. That's all there is to it. All action has love in it. So we become truly independent. I think Prabhupada is saying we become independent when when we change the um, when we change the reason for doing things from mind to heart bhakti means acting from the heart not from the mind love in action means acting from the heart and not from the mind and this is the I think it's really the most direct and easy way we can advance in our spiritual life, our everyday lives, the easiest steps to take. That we, that we drop our judgment about the outcome of our work, the product of our work, and focus on the love that we put into our work. In fact, we drop the idea of being of being judged. 
of saying that was good work, that was bad work. We release the idea that we are the creators of the work that we do. And we focus on the idea that we're using the work to express our love. And we let the energy of our bodies and our emotions put love into the work, put, put, put warmth and kindness and, and tenderness into the tasks that we do. Even hammering a nail, clunk, 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 that we put tenderness into this. Then we're doing bhakti. We let the love go out through the work. It doesn't matter if the nail goes down or, or breaks or bends over. <laughs> For putting it love into it, then we're successful. Now Prabhupada continues. This is already explained in the previous verse by the Lord, by Krishna. Now, by his grace, Arjuna is accepting him as the supreme truth in concordance, in agreement with the Vedic injunction. Grace, this is the, um, this, this means mercy. It's actually here in France, this is the word for mercy, grace. It's a very, very beautiful world, word. And mercy means goodness that comes to us without a cause. Mercy is what comes to us without a cause. So to say, sometimes we say, we pray for mercy, we ask for mercy, but this is a bit silly because mercy can only come when we don't ask for it. If we ask for it, then it's Amazon, as Gurudev says. It's Amazon mercy. Mercy just comes. Krishna didn't choose Arjuna because he wanted something back from Arjuna. He just gave with no reason, with no logic with no with no um, expectation and what's really beautiful here is that this changes arjuna's mood it changes our mood too when we receive something through mercy when we realize we didn't we did not receive it because we deserved it because we earned it because we're good and therefore we should have it. When we realize this, then it softens our heart. It opens us. Then we realize the, the love is just coming. It's not because I'm good or bad. It's not because I'm tall or short or French or Japanese. It comes no matter what. There's nothing I can do. I have no control. It will come if it comes. That's what mercy means. Goodness which has no cause. It's the most, I'm sure, it's the most powerful idea in the world. It can do so much work, so much beautiful things. I was in I was in a bookshop yesterday or not, last week in Paris, and uh, there there were some people there, and there, it was obviously one person's birthday, and some friends bought a book for her and gave her the book, and she was very happy and opened it and very very grateful. And very, very nice. And then, and then they left. And I was alone, and there was another woman with her child there. Mm. And 
And I felt this beautiful act of giving. And so I I bought a book and I asked the shop to wrap it as a package. And then I gave it to the woman. <laughs> it's a complete stranger. And she said, what? <laughs> what are you doing? And I said, I want you to have this gift. And then I turned, I left. This was my, my, this was my trying to give mercy, to have mercy. There was no reason to give her the book. She didn't know who I was. She was a little frightened at first, but then she opened up. And uh, she was so happy then. She just glowed and she understood it was mercy. She understood that she'd gotten something for no reason at all, that she didn't have to be a good woman or a bad woman or rich or poor or tall or short or beautiful or, or not. She got it just because she got it. This was mercy. I'm sorry, I don't mean to say that I was playing like God, but it was a very beautiful thing to, to see her have this experience. And this is what Arjuna got. He didn't ask for anything. God gave it to him. And that's what Prabhupada says now in the next line. He says, it is not because Krishna is an intimate friend of Arjuna that he is flattering him by calling him the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the absolute truth. So he's not, uh, Arjuna is not saying these nice things because he wants to, he wants to get something back from God from Krishna. He doesn't want to flatter him. It's not that that reason he does it. He's saying it because he feels it. He's being merciful too. And then finally, well, not finally. <laughs> then he goes on and says, uh, Prabhupada says, whatever Arjuna says in these two verses is confirmed by Vedic truth. So even if you want to look at it from a philosophical point of view, then it's still true. He goes on, he says, Vedic injunctions affirm that only one who takes to devotional service to the Supreme Lord can understand him. Others cannot. So this is saying that what Arjuna has experienced is also said in the in the in the scriptures in the shastras. So this is a place which is where Arjuna is completely surrendered. There's there's no difference between his heart and the heart of God. He's at one with Krishna. His ego has gotten out of the way. He doesn't say, I am Arjuna and there is Krishna. He's gotten his selflessness, self, 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 sorry. He's getting his self out of the way. His blockage is removed. And when we do that, we jivas, then we also become one with the heart of Krishna. We also become identical with what's said in the Shastras. And we know we don't need to read the Shastras anymore because we're already living what they are saying. All we need to do is feel, to live, and we will already be expansions of the Shastras, because this is what we are. We're blocked by our egos, but the Shastras aren't there to dictate from us. Sorry, the Shastras aren't there to dictate to us. They're not law books to tell us how to live. 
the Shastras in Vaishnavism are there to explain what we are. And when we are completely ourselves, when we are completely loving beings, devotional beings, then we are the Shastras. So when we go to read the Bhagavatam and other, other important books, we go there to find out who we are already, not who we should be. We go there to find in Bhagavatam, for example, what Krishna is, because Krishna is already our in, in our hearts, or we are already part and parcel of Krishna. It's to find out who we are in relation to God, not to change our lives in order to be something we are not. It's rather to change our lives in order to be what we are. All the Shastras are, in a way, the map of the world of, of, of who we are. So if they help to guide us back to ourselves, then that's very good. We should not think they're telling us to go somewhere else. They're not dictators. Okay. Now Prabhupada moves on to um, Smarana. See. Remembering or thinking. Thinking of. And here, too, we want to, in our everyday lives, we want to we want to be clearer about it, what it means to think about something, to remember something. Prabhupada says, this constant thinking, oh, I think I jumped over a line, didn't I? Yes, I jumped one line. Sorry. The, the, the line above is the Mundaka Upanishad confirms that the Supreme Lord, in whom everything is resting, can be realized by those who engage constantly in thinking of him. So when we're doing devotional service, when we're doing smarana, when we're thinking, remembering him, then uh, we will we will confirm what you find in the in the Vedas. So then the next line he says, this constant thinking of Krishna is smaranam, one of the methods of devotional service. So this is very important, smarana. As we know, it's part of our practice. And this is what uh, Bhagavad Gita is just reminding us. But smarana, thinking of something, thinking of God or anything, it does not mean... Smarana is not like when I say, I'm thinking about a banana. Or I'm thinking about my electricity bill. Or I'm thinking about the World Cup. Smarada doesn't mean that I'm here and the thing I'm thinking about is over there. And to think about Krishna doesn't mean I have to stop thinking about the banana or about the World Cup. It means that thinking about the banana is already thinking about Krishna. In Smarana, Smarana is a realization. It's, it's not even thinking. Smarana is the realization that what comes into my mind is already God. And seeing clearly that it's already God. Seeing that the Yamuna River is already God. Seeing that the fruit seller outside the ashram is already God. 
This is remembering Krishna. It's not at all saying, hmm, let me re remember what was Krishna like, I better think about him. No, it's the realization that God is already all around us and inside us. So don't punish yourself. Don't be unkind with yourself when you think about bananas and say, oh, stop thinking about bananas. Think about Krishna instead. No. Open your heart to the banana and realize that you're thinking about Krishna when you're thinking about banana. This is smart. It's not to think about something different, but, but about thinking about something that's close by and understand that God is in it. It's surrendering to the reality that Krishna is in everything, is everything. It's a very, very Western way to think about smarana that, well, I'm here, I'm in my room, I need to think about Krishna, who's somewhere else. No, smarana means thinking about the way in which Krishna is already in my life, already present in my heart and in everything around me. And Krishna, sorry, Prabhupada goes on. It is only by devotional service to Krishna that one can un understand his position and get rid of his material body. In the same way, in the same way, doing devotional service. It's not about trying to change the relationship between the soul and Krishna. It's not trying to say, I'm, I'm wrong about where I was with Krishna, or I'm wrong about this, or I'm wrong about that. Devotional service means understanding the way my experience is already divine. It's about ex explain, uh, understanding the connection between love, giving love in our action, love in action, and bringing, making God more um, visible in our lives. Devotional service means understanding more deeply that 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 God is already there. And the reason it's so important with devotion is that the strongest force of God in, in the world is loving energy of Radharani. So when we're loving, when we're putting love into our action, then we're immediately calling forth Radharani. And by calling forth Radharani, we're calling forth Radha Mohan. In a way, when we start loving in our daily lives, we turn on the, the, the lights so we can see better, the big lights, spotlights, and we can see better the divine in our, in our lives. We can find our path. We know where to go. Or our, our navigator, our guru, helps us to find the path. And when we live in this devotional service, then things become clearer. We can see our relationship to God and we can check ourselves, as Guru Dev says. We see what's material, what's superficial, and we see what's what's not. And Prabhupada goes on and he says, in the Vedas, the Supreme Lord is accepted as the purest of the pure. One who understands that Krishna 
is the purest of the pure, can become purified from all sinful activities. Now, what is a sinful activity? Again, we know from Gurudev reminds us about uh, the Gospel of Mary Magdalena that sinful activity is activity that's done in forgetfulness of the soul. To be pure is to live from our souls. It means to, to brush off the dirt, the covering of material existence, in order to reveal the loving soul that's underneath, that's already underneath, already full of pure love. No need to clean. Once we uncover it, it's already good. It's already clear and pure and loving. May I have a question, Udava? Yes, who's speaking? Um, Raseshwari. Ah, hello, hello. Rane, Rane. Um, I hope I can tell it in my words. I The last days we talk about Smarana and what a advanced devotee told me, it's only possible when your heart is pure. And I know my heart is not pure. I'm on the way and I hope that I get the mercy that my heart will become purer and purer. And what you said is, when I see Krishna everywhere in the banana, um, how can this is, I think, is this not material? This is not, when my heart is not pure and I think about Krishna, I think about Radharani and I'm, um, looking for love in everything what I see and in every act every day and searching for this. Um, how can I bring this together to purify and to try to see love, but I'm not yet purified? Maybe can you explain this in your words again? Hmm. You understand what I mean? I think I understand what uh, you mean. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I don't consider myself an advanced devotee, so I'm a little cautious about answering personal questions, but I, I'll, I'll try. Um, and I'm afraid to d disagree with the, with a fellow Vaishnava. I don't really want to do this either, but, but I. Uh, with respect for this person who told you this, in my experience, personal experience, the purification comes together with the smarana. So as we reflect more, as we find, as we see Krishna more in the world, we become purer. So I would not say that we must become perfectly pure, and then we can start having smarana. Then we can reflect on, on, on Krishna and remember Krishna. No, it's by finding the beauty of the creation. This is why I meant the banana. Uh, I don't mean the banana as material pleasure. I mean the banana as part of the creation of, of the material world, which Krishna also has made. But the more we see God and things around us, the more we we become pure. Find... Beautiful answer, Uddhava. Is it, is it Beautiful. okay, Guru Dev? Okay. Without practicing, we cannot become pure. Our Smaran make us pure. Thinking make us pure. Mm -hmm. We cannot be a pure being without thinking. Without a smaran. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good is that helpful, my dear? Yeah.
Devadi, was that was that yes. helpful for you? Yes, thank you very much. Um, Guru Dev's words um, was interrupted. We didn't hear exactly what I understood from Guru Dev is that he said that smarana makes us pure when we think and when you listen and and have visions in my word in my words is that right and when we yes. try to be in smarana we became pure yes that's what gurudev said they go they oh. go together they go together the more we i mean pure let's be careful purification means um, uh, thinking and acting and experiencing the world only from the heart not from any ego so it's not there's nothing moral about it nothing moral about it nothing about goodness or qualities or anything it's being authentically you as a loving being that's when that's the that's what purification means it's not like cleaning out the bad stuff or something. It's just cleaning out the ego. So the more that we see Krishna around us in our memories, in our thoughts, the more this automatically happens. So keep looking for it. Look for it around in you in the room right now. Find the <laughs> yeah. love and you will be one step more pure by the end of the class. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Gurudev and Udava. Thank you very much. And here's another question. Thank you. <laughs> Radhe Radhe, Udava Ji. This is Vandana. Ah, Radhe Radhe dear. <laughs> I have a question, a similar maybe, a little bit. So, um, for example, when you say... Um, Again, the example with the banana, and then comes the sentence to get rid of the body. Um, my question is, if I would use the body um, and, uh, and try to um, remember that in every atom, only for example, yeah, is Paramatma that makes it alive and that it sticks together out of love um, and works everything like a universe in itself no only for example would this also be smaranam because for me what's the difference between a thought about a banana and the material body so this is my question in this case um everywhere we can recognize uh, Krishna, Krishna's creation. We are doing smarana. So if you're thinking something like, I mean, it's, you say it's an example, but it's a very special <laughs> example. Um, if you're thinking about, look at the miracle of the human hands, how they can pick up things and do things and play guitar and play harmonium. Then we're seeing the divine in the creation this is also divine creation so this is also understanding that that krishna is more present in the world than we thought before we thought about the hands mm. so in a way the, the answer is yes this is smarana if we're thinking the, the simple question is to put it the most simple way where is no, Krishna is present everywhere, in the spiritual world, in the material world, everywhere, in everything, in every atom. And yet we don't see Krishna there because of our ego. The more we see him, the more you see the divine in everything around you, in that room where you're sitting. It's full of divinity, people and things and creations and thoughts and the more you see this clearly, the more pure is your heart. So I suppose we could talk about the atoms in your in your body too. Though it's a special example. Thank one you. thing I want to add. One thing I want to add. Radhe. Please, Gurudev. 
thing is this, like uh, first we have to fix all in deep love. When we are in deep love with some form, then I always see everywhere to that. It depends upon the intense of my love. How intense is love? Love becomes very intense. If it's not there, that you give example in banana. So everywhere we see him, that is because of the lover we see that beauty, hmm. that he is everywhere. But is <coughs> is only my love who makes me to see everywhere. It depends on the intention of the love. Hmm. How much my intention of is fixed in that the smaran. Mm. You explain in your words. No, that was very that was very clear. The more we are fixed in our love, the more we will see love, we will see the divine in the world. Lover in everywhere. Lover everywhere. Remember last week I talked about walking in Tokyo when you're when you were perfect, uh, perfectly fixed in your inner love. Then everyone on the street will be uh, you will be in love with them. So nice k k sharing, everybody. Is there anyone else who wants to? Anyone else who wants to talk about this? So Hindi says, Radhika say, when I see, only I see my sham. Yeah. In tree, is a black tree, I see yeah. sham. Anything is very similar to him, it's remind me sham. Yeah. So Vadana, wherever when I'm fully in love, then I see I see God in your fingernails. I yeah. see it everywhere. Yeah. yeah. That is our madness. Pagal <laughs> Baba. Pagovika. <laughs> more and more comments on them? One more comment from me. Please. Satsata from Norway, he wants to be very close to you. Oh, you good. See? I look forward. Srivasya, Srivasya, sorry. Srivasya. Srivasya, talk with him. Well, now I come next week, Gurudev, so I can talk to him. But he is going in this match. To oh, dear. Oh. So please talk with him. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe yes. he can come back. Yes. Uh, yes, can you hear me, Ulava? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, hello. Um, <laughs> um, it's been very nice listening to these lectures. Mm. So, um, if there was one question I would like to ask you, then it would be... Um, <laughs> How was the transition for you to, because you've, I've heard you've been a philosopher and a professor and 
I was wondering how you managed to let go of your logical mind and surrender into the heart and how that process has been for you. This I'm very curious about. Well, this is a very boring question for everybody here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! <clears throat> but it's an interesting question for me because... Bore us! Bore us! <laughs> I think I'm struggling to let go of the logical mind a bit. You know, Shido Asif was really, um, now looking back, it's, it's, uh, the question is the opposite. Having felt what I felt when I was your age, in my heart, why did I have to spend 30 years being a philosopher? So when I was your age, I felt what you feel. And because of my upbringing, I thought that the answer to that was philosophy. And actually, philosophy has helped me a lot. I think I think I'm a better Vaishnava because I'm I'm a philosopher. But uh, but I see that it was a a detour. It was a shorter path. Well, Gurudev would do like this. Can you see me on the screen? Gurudev said we we go around this way to come to the nose <laughs> instead of going right to uh, the source. So it was something I felt earlier on, and uh, my whole life has been coming back to that. And uh, lots of personal experiences with different things, I suppose, and and something about uh, growing older in life and and making decisions about what I should do with my time and uh, about meeting extraordinary people like your 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 first cousin yeah and other extraordinary people like uh, Gurudev, of course i've been very lucky to meet these people and to to see the way but I don't think I was I could do it when I was twenty when I was let's say forty. And I was still too very arrogant. Well, I was very arrogant even last year, but I'm getting better. So there's a bit answer. Maybe we, we can talk more about it if you like. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Well, if we could stop here, if there were there more sharing, that's very nice, I think. I think everybody enjoys that a lot. Well, there's a little bit more in the verse. We can finish this verse if you prefer. Um, we're trying to find where I was. Yeah. Prabhupada goes on then and he says the following. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan. And one should always meditate upon him and enjoy one's transcendental relationship with him. So in a way, he's repeating this idea of smarana but of calling to mind. And it's very, very special idea, Smarana. Why call to mind. are you telling name of Krishna? Oh. Because Brahma Gyani also there, so they impersonal philosophy not to practice. He oh. said that Krishna is specific. You can know this. He has a eyes, nose, face, sweetness, love, all circumstances. Mm -hmm. With the food. This Krishna meditation mm -hmm. in the form to reach reach the form of your we not take the soul come to the realization of the forms. 
and your spiritual form. So Prabhupada must see that he is always reminding us not to stay without form. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And very special that uh, uh, Smarada, we say two different things. We say thinking about, but we say remembering or recalling. So remembering Krishna's form is part of remembering our own Swarup, remembering our, our own form, which we already have, we just don't see it. And so in part, remembering smarana means looking inside us to find the form of Krishna there, to rediscover our own Swarup, our own spiritual form. So smarana, in, in a way, yes, it's thinking about Krishna, but it's thinking about um, ourselves, our our own souls. And we've been we've been on a holiday from our souls for a long time, maybe many lives, many, maybe many many lives, and now we're going back. And Prabhupada goes on saying, he is the supreme existence, Krishna, his supreme existence. He is free from bodily needs, birth, and death. Not only does Arjuna confirm this, but all the Vedic literatures confirm that. So the two things, there are two uh, testimonies. One is Arjuna saying what he has realized by listening to Krishna for the 10 chapters. He's finally come to understand himself in relation to Krishna. But then also in parallel, the Vedic literatures are saying the same thing. So it's two parallel paths to the same truth. The Puranas and history, uh, sorry, Vedic literatures, Puranas and histories we were talking about. In all Vedic literatures, Krishna is thus described. And the Supreme Lord himself also says in the fourth chapter, although I am unborn, I appear on this earth to establish religious principles. I am unborn, this means I have always existed, but I come at in this time on earth in an avatar, in a material form to, to, to do the work I have to do. And Prabhupada continues, he is the supreme origin. He has no cause. For he is the cause of all causes, and everything is emanating from him. Everything is coming from him. So this doesn't mean that he's a great dictator again. He's not the great, he's not the maximum power, and everybody else has less power or no, no power, it's that he is the most perfectly realized. And when we realize Krishna, when we understand what Krishna is, through our loving relation, because we can't get there through philosophy, when we realize what Krishna is, we realize that he is everything. What's going on? Sorry, Gurudev, go ahead. No. We understand that Krishna is everywhere. And we understand, because we feel him in our hearts mostly, strong, the most strongly, 
we understand that the Radharani is the source of him being everywhere. We have proof. We don't even need to go to science and books. We feel in our hearts Krishna, and our hearts are governed by Radharani. Therefore, Radharani is governing Krishna. It's simple. We feel it most in our hearts. Oh, I'm sorry, Gurudev. Some other things going on there. Um, Rade Rade Udava yes, Udavaji, yes. could you please explain um, what you said? Our heart is governed by Radharani. Yes. You... <laughs> I can try. Okay. The best students ask the most difficult questions. Radharani is the goddess of love. She's the prema shakti, the energy of divine love. The reason we are sitting here talking about Krishna is because we feel something in our hearts. It's not because we intellectually think that's an interesting question. Well, maybe somebody's there because they think it's intellectually an interesting question. It is an interesting question. But I think why we're here is because we feel something. Mostly because of because we have some contact with Gurudev who makes us feel great feelings, very strong feelings. But then also because we have contact with other devotees and other people that make us feel something. But the point is that the evidence, the proof to us personally of Krishna is our in our hearts. It's in the love in our hearts. We feel love. And since this is Radharani's business, so to speak, this is what I mean that Radharani is governing our understanding of Krishna because she's the loving energy of the universe. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. Prabhupada says this perfect knowledge, let's see, this knowledge is that everything is coming from Krishna. This perfect knowledge can be had by the grace, by the mercy of the Supreme Lord. So once again, it's this kind of goodness that comes to us without any reason, not because we deserve it or because we're good or bad, it just comes. And when the um, when we feel that presence of God in our hearts, then I, again, I repeat myself that I, I think this is what, what also proves to us that Radharani is present there and that our our Raghunuga Bhakti way of practicing is so right. This is personally what I, I feel. But because it comes to us through the love, and it grows when we love, when we feel love, then our relationship to God grows. Then this this for me is personally the, the proof or the justification of um, Raghunuga Bhakti. This is Radharani who's 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 nurturing us in in that way. Okay, now we're almost finished here. And then Prabhupada says, Arjuna expresses himself through the grace of Krishna, through the mercy of Krishna. If we want to understand Bhagavad Gita, we should accept the statements in these two verses. These two where Arjuna is speaking. This is called the parampara system, acceptance of the disciplic succession. Unless one is in the disciplic succession, he cannot, she cannot understand Bhagavad Gita. Now, if you're really 
be loyal in the class, then you know that the first three weeks of the class, we, we talked about the introduction to Bhagavad Gita that Prabhupada wrote, and where he talks about Parampara. And he explains exactly this idea. The idea is that what is passed down through the generations, from guru to disciple, from guru to disciple, through devotional relationships, is love. That is the magic heritage of the history of spiritual life and Vaishnavism. And so parampara is not like we would say in the West. Uh, what do you call that? Like DNA, family, ancest ancestry from, from blood. No, it's ancestry from the heart. Which is why a bona fide guru is so important, which is so why understanding where we come from in the spiritual family is so important. What's, imp what's, what's the core of all the practice we're doing is what we received by example, through relation and love with others, and most importantly with Guru, Param Guru, and so and and so forth. That's what Parampara means for also for um, for Prabhupada, the transmission not of DNA, but of spiritual knowledge, spiritual knowledge that we can't put into words or into books. We can only see it and feel it and experience it. It's the transmission of love. And there again, since it only comes by the vehicle of love, right? think of the internet, which is only flowing with love through there. Who is, this is Radharani dancing through the generations, from one to the next, flowing from Param Gurudev into Gurudev into you. This is Radharani playing around and dancing and and loving and spreading and nurturing the loving relationship. So she danced in Param Guru Gurudev's heart, Govinda Das Babaji's heart. She danced right from his heart into our Gurudev's heart and danced right from his heart, and she's still dancing <laughs> from Gurudev's heart into and to ours. That's why you're there. That's why you feel what we feel. So, and then the next line is, Prabhupada says, it's not possible by so-called academic education. It's not because academic education is wrong. It's because it cannot transmit spirit. And thank God it can't. We're so blessed that it can't. If it were just a bunch of dry teachers saying, read this paper and you'll know everything, then we'd be gone, we'd be lost. No, it's only through loving each other, spreading love, receiving love, that the spiritual knowledge can, can pass. Academic knowledge is knowledge that we have. Devotional knowledge is knowledge that we are. And the question is, do we want to live out what we have? Do we want to realize that, or do we want to realize what we are? And I think we know the answer to that question. So the very last line of Prabhupada is, unfortunately, those proud of their academic education, huh, <laughs> despite so much evidence in Vedic literatures, stick to their obstinate, their stubborn conviction that Krishna is an ordinary person. I would say not because of evidence in the Vedic literature, but because evidence in our hearts. We feel it, we know it in our hearts, that this is not what we have, is not who we are. So let's try to shift from what we have to, to what we are.